Well, folks, the day is finally here. It is time to talk about the last games for the Sega Genesis Mini. And honestly, I've absolutely loved covering these games that were announced for the Sega Genesis Mini. Huge thank you to Sega for allowing me to get the information so that I can make these videos. A huge thank you to you guys for watching the video so that Sega entrusted me with this information to make subsequent videos. But now the day is here, and honestly, I'm kind of sad. I've really enjoyed covering it, and I think you guys have enjoyed the coverage too. But today is now the day to talk about the final 12 12, I mean 10, don't I? Sega Genesis mini games. So sit back, relax, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and let's jump into the list. Hey, RGT85, hey Sean. Oh my God, it's Stevie Richards! So in sticking with the motif for these videos, I like to talk about the games that surprise me the least to the games that surprise me the most on these lists of games. So kicking things off, we're gonna talk about a game I honestly expected to be on there, but it's really a game that I'm not super familiar with, and it's a game that I want to familiarize myself with, and that is Kid Chameleon. Now, Kid Chameleon was a 2D platformer, which of course was a prevalent genre during the 8-bit and the 16-bit era, but this game looks really cool because you can get different costumes that you can use. You can get like a costume that sort of reminds me of Jason Voorhees where you're throwing axes at people. You can get this tank and blow through enemies. It has a really cool graphical style and I like the music in this game as well. Like I said, it's not a game that I'm super well versed in. It's a game that I never really fully checked out, but honestly, I think I want to check it out now. After viewing some gameplay footage of it, I think it's a game that would really interest me. So Kid Chameleon is confirmed for the Sega Genesis Mini. Moving right along, we have one of Sega's most iconic puzzle games, and that is Columns. Now, Columns was pretty much Sega's entry into the puzzle market to sort of combat Tetris. Of course, Tetris was very, very popular on things like the Game Boy and the NES, so to sort of circumvent that, Sega had Columns, and Columns was another match three puzzle game that was honestly pretty fun. A lot of these compilations have Columns on there. Of course, you have games like Columns and Columns 3, but if you like puzzle games, Columns is a super solid puzzle game. It's been released on other compilations, like I said, but I still think it's great to see it on here because it's sort of a memorable 16-bit game. It's also a franchise that has completely disappeared. So it's nice to see Columns get a return to the Sega Genesis Mini, and that is another confirmed game for the list. Moving right along, we have another fighting game because so far we've only talked about Street Fighter 2 Special Champion Edition coming to the Genesis Mini, and now we have another game to sort of go alongside of that, and that is Virtual Fighter 2. Now, I have a very personal story with Virtual Fighter 2 on the Sega Genesis. First and foremost, I don't really know why it's called Virtual Fighter 2. It's essentially Virtual Fighter. It's the roster of Virtual Fighter. Why is it called Virtual Fighter 2? But as a child, I remember going to a Toys R Us and seeing Virtual Fighter 2 available for my Sega Genesis, and I was blown away because I loved the 3D Virtual Fighter games. Now, granted, once I found out this was a 2D fighting game, I kind of got a bit turned off by it, and I never played it until I was an adult. But once I played it as an adult, it's actually a really solid fighting game. It really doesn't sort of make sense that Virtual Fighter would work in a 2D style, but it definitely works in this game. The graphics aren't all that great, the music is a bit muted as well, but I think the gameplay in this game is actually really fun, especially if you like Virtua Fighter. It's a bit dumbed down comparative to the Sega Saturn or the 32X versions of the game, but I think Virtua Fighter 2 is a great addition to this list. It's definitely great to see fighting games on this list, and it's a game that I enjoy playing from time to time. Definitely sort of an underrated game because of the fact that it was a 2D game, but a game I definitely recommend checking out when it launches on the Sega Genesis Mini. But I gotta admit, I would like to see at least another fighting game on the Sega Genesis Mini. Virtual Fighter 2 is a good game. Street Fighter 2 Special Champion Edition is a great game, but it would be nice to see, I don't know, another game from the 16-bit era on the Sega Genesis. A really interesting fighting game and the start of a franchise that honestly never took off. Well, if you're like me, you're in luck because Eternal Champions will be on the Sega Genesis Mini. Now, Eternal Champions was kind of Sega's forte into the sort of Mortal Kombat style. It was definitely a darker game, a grittier fighting game, something that Sega really hadn't done up until this point with their fighting games. And honestly, I always thought it was a good 2D fighting series. There was only two games released in the franchise for it. You had the Eternal Champions on the Sega Genesis, and then you had a Sega CD version of the game as well that included some additional extra content, sort of a pseudo sequel. But then after that, Eternal Champions just sort of went away. And I would always like to have wondered what Sega could have done with this franchise alongside of mainstays like Virtual Fighter. So it's definitely great to see this interesting piece of Sega history with Eternal Champions be on the Sega Genesis Mini because I think a whole bunch of new people are going to be able to check out this game for the first time and honestly see that it's a pretty decent game. 
Next up, we have a game that honestly, I've been playing a lot on my arcade one up over here. And it's a game that I really enjoyed. I did not like the NES version, but I enjoyed it on the arcade one up. And that is Strider. Now the Strider version that came out for Sega Genesis is pretty accurate to the arcade in terms of controls and graphics. Just the sound is a bit lacking, but Strider honestly is one of those Capcom franchises that I don't think people give it enough credit. The first Strider game honestly is a very, very good platforming game. It has a lot of interesting mechanics. The levels are sort of free flowing and that they're linear but you sort of have this sense of exploration as well and i think it's great to see strider on the sega genesis mini a definite forgotten franchise due to time but it's definitely something that i would like to see come back so seeing strider on here is definitely a big win in my opinion now obviously we're starting to wind down the list so i'm going to be throwing some bangers at you the first one light crusaders now this is a game that was sort of popping up on hidden gems videos for the sega genesis when hidden gems videos started becoming a thing and i really was interested in light crusader i ended up picking up this game and really enjoying it light crusader is basically like diablo sort of before diablo you have like this central town in which you get your missions and then you go to various dungeons and perform these missions it has sort of an isometric view to it and it's a game that i really like it was really sort of ahead of its time as a game genre and it's a game that is criminally overlooked on the sega genesis so to see light crusader on here is honestly a big win in my opinion i think this is a really solid game and a game that i think is going to surprise a lot of people when they end up playing this on the sega genesis mini so awesome to see light crusader on there i'm super stoked for that Moving right along, we have a game that actually someone messaged the Facebook page a few days ago asking me if this was on the list, and of course, I couldn't talk about it, but it is on this list, and honestly, it's a game that I'm not familiar with, and that is Alicia Dragoon. Now, like I said, I've never played this game before. Evidently, this was a game that was very critically well-received, but just sort of flew under the radar because of the time that it released. A lot of people just didn't seem interested in it, but looking back on it, it seems like it's a pretty popular game for a lot of retro collectors. From what I've gathered this game is a 2d platformer but you end up getting different sort of pets and you can pretty much level up these pets along with your character as you're blasting through areas and switch through these pets on the fly it's sort of a combination of like a shmup with a 2d platformer but i think it looks really good i really like the color palette they use in this game it seems like there's a lot of different secret areas you can check out as well so for this game to sort of be a mystery to me obviously this is going to be a mystery for a lot of people so i think this is going to be a big surprise for sega genesis mini owners and it's definitely a game I cannot wait to check out. Next up, we have a Japanese exclusive Genesis game that never saw an official release in North America until it was released on WiiWare, and it sort of went under the radar, and not a lot of people paid attention to it, and that is Monster World 4. Now, Monster World 4 is, of course, the fourth game in the Monster World series. We've had lots of things like Wonder Boy and Monster World on this system, so this is yet another game. Now, this is game is interesting in that it's a bit more linear than the other games in the series, but this game does have the added benefit of being a later release for the Sega Genesis. So the game itself looks absolutely fantastic and it still has that mix of action RPG elements into it as well. This is a game that honestly I've never played either before so I'm definitely really looking forward to this and I think it's a great addition to the list. Next up we have a treasure game that is a great game. Once again a sort of under the radar game and that is Dynamite Heady. Now Dynamite Heady was another 2D platformer coming to us from uh, Treasure and of course Treasure is known for games like Gunstar Heroes, but Dynamite Heady arguably is one of the best looking games on the Sega Genesis. It's a game that I actually enjoy playing. You can use your head and get different power-ups for your head and throw your head around, and that's your main form of combat and traversal through levels, but it's a really fun game, and I think it's one of the best looking Sega Genesis games ever. It has a really deep and rich color palette that you did not see with a lot of Sega Genesis games at that time because of the color limit on the system, but everything looks very clean and crisp and pops really well. It has really good music as well. It has that classic classic sort of treasure feel to it so it's definitely a game I'm super excited to see on here and it's definitely a game that I think is going to catch a lot of people by surprise by how good it is. And finally, the 10th and final game for the Sega Genesis Mini. What would a Genesis collection be without a game where you ride a motorcycle and you kick the shit out of people that are riding next to you and you're hitting cops and you're hitting people with chains and upgrading your bike? 
Yes, folks, Road Rash 2 is on the Sega Genesis Mini, and I'm absolutely ecstatic for this because Road Rash is a series that EA just doesn't give a shit about anymore, let's be honest. And it's great to see it on this system. Road Rash was one of the innovators of the car com or the vehicular combat sort of genre that has spurred on over the years, and it's just such a fun game. You upgrade your bikes, you get different weapons as you go along, you're punching people, you're trying to avoid cars. It was just an iconic game, a real sort of attitude era sort of 90s style game that you couldn't really do before then and it was just such a fun game so it's great to see Road Rash 2 on here. So I gotta be honest with you folks, I lied. There's two more games we gotta talk about. And these two games are pretty, pretty important games just for the significance of them. They're definitely very big wow moments for me. The first game we have to talk about is Darius 2, Darius 2, however you want to say it. Darius 2, Darius 2 is getting a North American release with the Sega Genesis Mini for the first time. This is a fantastic side-scrolling shmup game. Absolutely great, definitely reminds me a lot of R-Type, a lot of cool different characters that you're blasting through in these levels a lot of enemy variation really good graphics as well and like I said this is the first time it's releasing in the States it is an added bonus that Sega was definitely keeping very close to them so I'm super stoked to see this game on here and the final game is just absolutely amazing because it's one of those games that's considered a Sega Genesis holy grail it only released in Japan and Sega themselves acts like this game never released in Japan there's supposedly like only six copies in the entire world of this game and even that number is up for scrutiny because it could be less than this. And it's Tetris! Tetris on the Sega Genesis Mini! You gotta remember, Tetris was such a huge phenomenon and Nintendo was trying to put their stamp on it. That's why you had companies like Tengen come along and try to do their own version of Tetris and Nintendo ended up saying, no, no, you can't do that. Tetris is our thing. But yes, Tetris is going to be on the Sega Genesis Mini. An ultimate surprise, it'll go great alongside of Columns. And now we have 42 games for the Sega Genesis Mini. And honestly, this lineup is just great. I do think there are two games missing that I would have liked to have seen on here, Rocket Knight Adventures and Mortal Kombat 2. I really sort of assimilate those games with the Sega Genesis. I really feel like those were such strong games in the Sega Genesis library, but honestly, I cannot complain about this. I feel like there are so many bangers and so much great variety in this 42 game lineup that we have that nobody can really complain about it. It's great to see Sega doing so well with this. M2 is gonna nail that emulation and I cannot wait to get my hands on this system. So yes, we have now covered all 42 games that are officially confirmed for the Sega Genesis Mini. So let me know in the comment section down below what you think of the final 12 games. Have you enjoyed the games up till this point? And of course, are you going to pick up the Sega Genesis Mini? This is a day one purchase for me if I cannot get a review copy. Even if I get a review unit and get my hands on it early, I probably will still buy another one. Maybe just get a different region one because I like the way those look. And as always guys, thank you so much for supporting these videos and watching these videos. All of these videos have gotten really great views and that's allowed Sega to instill confidence in me and give me this information to give to you guys. So huge thank you to the viewers, huge thank you to Sega, and as always, I will catch you guys on the next video. Later.